hello you're welcome to my channel now this video right here is for you okay so we are talking about the loss of indices so i'm going to be treating these six laws well i'm not going to treat all of them in this video in this video i'm just going to talk about the first three all right okay so in subsequent videos we're just going to complete all of them now here on the first law we have that when we have a certain number let's say a okay either a number or it's good we can even use um, an unknown number for it, okay, let's say x or anything. So when we have a base, a times another base, b, now these base have some powers. Here the first power here is m, and here the second power here is just n, okay, so we have a same base with different powers or even the same powers. All we need to do is to take one, one of it and then add the powers, right? Now let me give you an example to illustrate that. Suppose we have x to power 2 times x to power 3. Okay, so by comparison with the first law, we see that x here, the bases are the same. Then the power that we had it to be m, the other power we had it to be n, so kind of different powers, okay? But even if they are repeated, there is no problem with that. Okay, so here we have 2 and here we have 3, right, as the powers. Okay. Well, from what we've learned already in the introduction to these indices, we saw that when we have x to power 2, we can rewrite that as x times, okay, let me use red for the multiplications, x, all right, and then times, when we have x to power 3, we can rewrite that as x times, x times another x like this, all right, you know, where we have to repeat the product, okay. So like this, now this right here is still a multiplication. So in fact, let me just do this, all right? Uh, this is multiplication, not x. Okay, so just put that down as x. And good enough, what you can see is x times x times x times x times x. Five x this multiplied together, all right? So according to what I said, those are five factors, okay? So that means that right there will converge to x and how many of them? One, two, three, four, five. So they repeat five times, right? So that right there is it. So that x to the power five, in fact, is just like saying two plus three will give you five, all right? So maybe if I just want to decompose that five, I will put it down as two plus three. That is why we say when we have a single base having some powers, okay, but the bases must be the same, then we just write down, put down the base, just one of it, and then we add the powers together like that, okay? And this right here is an illustration to show that. Okay, so that's very nice. All right, let's move on to the second law, which tells us that when we still have a single base, all right, let's say A in this case, and we're having a ratio like this, that is division, all right? A to power M divided by A to power N, and we, it is giving us that it is equal to M minus N, okay? So maybe we just go ahead and six, use some example like this and illustrate that, all right? And you observe that here was x to the power 2 plus 3. So that means that this right here, maybe just conclude it at once, is going to give us x to the power of 2 plus 3, which is just x to the power of 5, and that has been proven. Okay, so maybe you just go ahead and use another example. I would just like to use this. Let's say we have x to the power 7, okay? divided by x to the fourth power. All right, so that's very nice. Well, we'll go ahead and look at this as, well, according to this law, this right here will give us m minus n as the powers. That will be seven minus four. So that will just be x raised to the power of seven minus four, which will be x raised to the power of three. Well, let's check if this is gonna be true, all right? Let's solve this normal. So x to the power 7, we're going to take the product of 7 different x's. And the same thing with the 4. So I'm going to put this down as x times x times x times x times x. 7 of them. So this is the time, the product, right? This is just 5. Then multiply it again with another x and the last x on the top. In the denominator, we're just having four of them. So maybe I just put this down, all right? And I'll put this down times x times another one, 
times another one like this. Okay, very nice. Well, very nice. We see that we are going to cancel out some things, all right? So you cancel this with this one and just this and this cancels, cancels, and this cancels. And in the denominator, everything is gone. In the numerator, we're just left with x times x times x, all right? So that is x being multiplied, okay? And x is repeating three times. So this is equal to x times x times x which is the same thing as x to power 3. So the dot here still represents multiplication, all right? So that is x to power 3. And good enough, x to power 3 is what we get by just the subtraction. So instead of going through this tedious process, okay, which is going to be very long, assuming I gave you x to power 100, are you going to write it down to 100 times? So this will shorten the steps for you, all right? So you just take the power here, subtract this one from it, and the result is what you get as the new indices or as the new index. Okay, so that's very nice as the second illustration. Okay, what if we talk about the third one? Well, let me just give you, let's introduce the third law, all right? It seems a little bit strange. Let me use this second law to bring that into existence. Now, from the law number two, maybe I would just like to give you an, another example that will help us to see the third law immediately. Okay, suppose we have to divide x raised to the power of 4 divided by x raised to the power of 6, all right? Okay, very nice. And by this law, which we know already, this second law here, that we're going to take the top, the power here, minus the power at the bottom, so I'll just like to rewrite that as x to the power, the power on the top, which is 4, minus the power on the bottom, which is just 6. And you know what? 4 minus 6 is negative 2, all right? You are taking 6 things from 4, so that's just negative 2, like that. Very nice. Okay, that is uh, what we get. But assuming I wanted to expand everything, like I have done here, let's just say I go, go ahead and expand x to the power 4, and then x to the power 6. So on the top, I am going to enter with, let me just put down the top first. Those are four x's, and I'm going to multiply all of them together, all right? Then on the bottom, we're going to have six of them. So let me just put them down first. Okay, so we just like to multiply them like this. All right, and here we would like to start canceling some things, all right? So maybe I'll just cancel this and this, then this one and this one, then this one and this one, and then this one and this one. And we are left with only two x times x, that is x squared in the bottom, right? So on the bottom, we're going to have, on the top, we're going to have one. You know, everything cancels out and left with one times one times one, which is just one on the top. Then on the bottom, we're having x times x, which is just x squared. Very nice. So according to the second law, we see that the second law is true. Now we're having that x to the power negative two. And here we are having one over x to the power two. According to the third law, we see that when we are having a to power to a negative power, all right, negative n. So let's assume n is greater than zero. So negative n will be less than zero anyway. Well, we have a to a negative power, okay, indicated by a negative sign. This will be equal to one divided by a to power n. So here I can rewrite this as one divided by a, which is just the base. Here it is x to the power here, which is just 2, all right? And if you want to look at that with what we get from the expansion, they are the same, okay? So that means that whenever we have a negative power, okay, we just put 1 on top, divided by the base A to that power N, without a negative in this case, all right? So let's just say the negative brings it down a little bit. Okay, so that right there was for you. I'm going to end this video here, and we're going to continue with the number 4 laws of indices. Okay, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel.